pretty much picked up on finding Naturinda at a point where she was treated about two weeks back. So even though the snare was removed, we saw that over about a two and a half week period, her condition started again to rapidly decline. So we find Naturinda in a tree. We think that by darting her, she'll run down. It's actually contrary to what happens. We dart her, she passes out in the tree. Um, somehow we managed to get the vehicle under there. She falls on a mattress. We managed to pull her off and actually treat her and um, give her a, a cob antelope to actually feed on. Bushmeat snaring to catch animals using wire snares is one of the biggest threats to wildlife across Africa, especially in the savannah and forest areas of East Africa. Animals walk into these snares, they get caught, they can't escape, they can't feed themselves, they can't get water, and then they inevitably die. Now what that does is it affects carnivore numbers, things like lions, hyenas, wild dogs, because sometimes the carnivores themselves are caught, and then also the actual prey numbers get depressed, so they decline. Those carnivores have to move a lot bigger distances and the whole system actually collapses. The lions in Queen Elizabeth National Park, they actually have a culture of tree climbing. And that's an important tourism and lion sort of flagship point. You know, it brings in tourism. It's an emblem for lion conservation in Africa. And that's why this depletion of prey in that area is particularly alarming because it puts stress on lions in terms of how many lions that area can actually support. I am optimistic in a lot of ways about lion conservation and big cat conservation in general. The good thing with cats, like house cats, is that they're very good at breeding. And if there's prey and if there's any slither of protection in the form of a fence or ranges on the ground, cats come back quickly. But it's just about giving them that chance of protection.